as soon as I walk into my plant room, it stinks because of these Hoya flowers. <laughs> Look at those though. They're so cool. Where's the other one? There he is. So just so you know what I'm dealing with, it's um some Hoya stink. <laughs> Man, those Hoya flowers stink. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Madison and today I want to go through you guys. Go through you guys? What? Oh. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I'm Madison and today I want to go through all of my plants that have been really struggling this winter so far because apparently we have some more time to go. <laughs> We're at the beginning of February here and apparently, apparently, we're supposed to get snow here in Colorado up until like April or May. I don't know how I'm going to survive you guys. I'm going to need a vacation. <laughs> And then I'll probably need a vacation from the vacation because you know how that goes. But anyway, regardless, I've got some plants that are struggling this winter already. Um, not too terribly much, although I will say as I was like going around the house gathering plants to show you guys, um, I, I was finding more than I thought. But I mean, still in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's too bad. Stuff can be saved. It's not like, you know, things are totally dead. Oh. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But yeah, let's just get on into it here. Let's start with one that doesn't look so bad. Eh? Eh? <laughs> so this is the, um, I think it's been reclassified from Calathea to Geopertia um, orbifolia. Oh, we're a little wet. Um, it's a Beautiful plant, normally. Um, as you can see, we've got some weirdness over here. The plant, the pot is broken. Um, and that's because this plant got got by my dogs having like way too much fun in the living room. Can't even be mad at it, honestly. Like they were just having a ball. And uh, my big headed, my big block headed boy six toe uh, ran into one of my little corner tables that I have like tucked into a corner. He usually doesn't hit it and when he does it's like usually pretty light but he was hitting those corners fast in the living room so he ran into it pretty good and knocked this guy over. Um, yeah it made a, it made a mess a little bit but nothing that a good old vacuum cleaner can't fix. Um, and then some scissors you know and like a new pot for this one will fix this. Um, but yeah other than that I mean I think he's doing pretty well. Hopefully, oh, oh, we're losing. I thought I was losing water. I'm losing soil <laughs> from our little area right here. So yeah, I've got some like dead stuff here that I just need to clip off because it's not gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna pull the entire plant out. Do you see this? <laughs> That's not great. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, this one is mostly a dog situation, so that's kind of a me thing. Um, this wasn't got by pests or anything. I don't think. No, I think it's just kind of dusty, as per usual. Um, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Dust your plants, you know what I mean? Dust your plants, do it more than me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, God, dust accumulates so quickly. It's just wild. It's kind of irritating. It's really irritating, let's be honest. Who likes to dust? Not me, but it's like, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. Um, we can admit it. But anyway, so yeah, this one, um, again, got caught by the dogs. Not a big deal. Totally fixable. So, um, you know, I've got a repotting video planned here soon. So I'm just gonna, oh, <laughs> I'm tossing soil over here. I'm just gonna add this guy to the mix of plants to be repotted. Repot? Repotted. Repotted. Um, yeah. Geopersia orbifolia. <laughs> kind of a sad example, but that's what this whole video is. So now my next plant to show you is a string of turtles. Now it is not the string of turtles that I have usually shown you guys. That beautiful, fairly lush, I would say, um, pretty long now also string of turtles that I've got hanging in my window um, in my plant room. I'm talking about this little guy. So let me get you a good look at him. <laughs> not terrible, but not great. Definitely not great. Maybe even not good. Let's say that. Maybe even not good. Um, but yeah, so this is my little sad string of turtles. Um, so yeah, as you can see by the soil here, he's very dry. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like to water 
in the area that I've got this guy in and I also am lazy when I water this guy um, and I don't take him like out of his little situation. I'll usually just leave him where he is. I'll pop a photo here so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I usually like leave him there and just kind of water him little tiny bits at a time. But as you can tell by the soil, it looks pretty darn hydrophobic. So most of the water immediately runs right through the plant and then that fills up that little, little tiny saucer really, really quickly. And if I'm being totally honest, it usually ends up, <laughs> so bad, it usually ends up falling uh, over and out of the little tiny saucer there. And then the water will end up like falling either um, just on the table that is below it again. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, either just going on the table right there. If I get lucky, it'll end up in a plant. That usually doesn't happen. So yeah, I'm trying to get better about just like walking this cute little guy and the other two that are up there um, over to the bathroom. I am better about that with my like string of hearts that's right next to it just because it's longer and I think I just care about it a little bit more, you know what I mean? Because it is more of a substantial plant. Um, whereas this guy, I just kind of took from cuttings from my mother plant, not even cuttings. They just like fell off the plant when I was transporting it. Um, and I just, stuck them in some soil here um, and they rooted and they have grown, but you can tell the leaves are super, super tiny. So I think the reason for like the really, really tiny growth is because it is so far away from any natural light source. I don't have any supplemental lighting going on in that area either. It's like one of the only areas of my house um, of like a random spot of plants where I don't have supplemental light. So I should probably change that eventually here. <sighs> But yeah, not today, not this month, not next month either. It's going to be a while till I do any like major changes to this area. And I do really like the way that it looks right now. So I don't want to like super change it up or anything like that. I do just need to like look for some extra lighting, maybe like one of those clampy like three arm lights or something like that. Cause I could maybe clamp it like onto the outside of my grow tent or something. Cause it's just like, you know, this metal bar and I could clamp it to the outside of it probably. Maybe do something like that. Let me know what you think in the comments below of what I should do for that area just to give it a little bit more light so that hopefully the growth isn't so sad. Like, do you see how tiny those little turtles are? Those are the smallest turtles I've ever seen. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the plus side, I have not seen any pests or anything like that, which totally makes sense because it is so far away really from any of my other plants, which is definitely a plus. Um, if you do have issues with pests a lot, like I do, spider mites and thrips now, we it's a whole party. Um, if you do have issues with pests, I definitely recommend trying to keep your plants as separate as possible, which, you know, can be difficult at times if you are a plant maximalist, as I guess I am. I didn't, don't usually think of myself as a maximalist. I like to keep kind of everything else in the house very, not like minimal, minimal, but I like to keep it clean and not like cluttered. But if you ask me, plants don't count as clutter. So it gets a little wild. Um, and therefore the plant's leaves do end up touching each other. Um, so that can just, you know, that just lends to quicker spread of pests. So if you are having issues with that, try to separate your plants at least a little bit so the leaves aren't like fully touching and overlapping each other because that will help slow down the spread a little bit more so that you can hopefully catch the pests before they get too crazy. Um, but yeah, so yeah, no pests for this guy. That's where I was going with that. No pests on him, luckily, because he is separated. Um, so I don't have to fight that battle. I just need to get better about my watering and yeah, figure out some sort of lighting situation. I don't know. I'm also trying to be good about not spending money right now. <sighs> it's so funny. We don't like spend our money on anything like fun, really. You know, I'll, you know, I'll get some plants occasionally, really not very often. Um, and, you know, my boyfriend will get like a tool or something every once in a while. But other than that, we really just spend our money on food. Like, I don't know. Food is so expensive. It's crazy. We don't eat out either. We never eat out. We're just doing grocery shopping. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Anyway, let's go along. What do I want to do here? <laughs> Let me show you this guy. Okay. 
This is really sad, you guys. This is so sad because this is one of my favorite plants and usually one of my most low maintenance plants. Like I love this guy. And this winter has just hit her so hard. <gasps> Look at her. <laughs> you guys, that's so sad. <laughs> Do you hear? So crispy, so crispy. Oh my God. <laughs> so bad. Oh geez, look at that. So sad. So yes, this is my Maranta Lemon Lime. Oh gosh. This guy's like past a repot stage. If you ask me, this is, we're at the like, I'm gonna cut it back, stick what cuttings are salvageable in water and just like cross my fingers and hope for the best. Luckily though, these plants are much easier to come by than when I originally bought this plant. I've had this guy for such a long time, you guys. <sighs> such a long time. I'm really proud that I've had this plant for so long, but I don't know how much longer she's gonna stick around. I'm hoping I can salvage her. I am, I'm going to salvage her. It's gonna happen. I need to just like set my mind to it. I'm gonna salvage this plant. Um, I don't wanna buy another one. I just don't. I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather spend my money on different plants than another Maranta Lemon Lime. Sorry, that's so loud probably. But, um, but yeah, this guy is just so sad. I really think that the main issue with this plant is the lack of sun or just change in light in general. Um, and then I must have just let them get too dry, obviously. Look at that crispiness. I cannot just blame the lack of light on that, okay? This is definitely a me thing and not just the sun thing. Um, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> let me just show you the top of that again. That's so sad. <laughs> you know, we have to laugh at ourselves when stuff like this happens. We can't get too bummed. It is just a plant and like I said, it's salvageable, you know, for as sad as this looks and sounds, it is salvageable. We can definitely do something with this. Um, if you're interested to see how exactly I'm gonna treat this guy, um, stay tuned for a repot video. Like I said, I've got one planned here uh, to film in the next day or so. I'm hoping to do that today, but I've got a lot of things I wanna do today. I've got a couple other videos that I wanna to try to film for you guys that I'm really excited to film. And um, yeah, and I wanna do this repot, so we'll see. And I wanna to go to the nursery. So we'll see how much I get done today. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, if you do wanna see how I treat this guy, uh, stay tuned for that repot video because I will um, include this plant in there. It's gonna be very, very simple. It is not going to get repot. Like I told you, um, we're just gonna be chopping this guy up and sticking him in water. But if you're wondering, how to go about that with a plant like this. Um, stay tuned. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna move along. It's obvious that this guy has just been done dirty by me. So I'm so sorry. You know, I think the issue is I got a little bit complacent with this plant because it was such an easy care plant um, and such a low maintenance plant for me all through spring, summer, even fall. Pretty easy care fall, I will say, you know, with the cold and maybe a little bit more drafts and whatever, I was starting to see more crispy leaves that I was having to cut off. But man, once winter really hit, it was like, ooh, <laughs> I'm not happy. So yeah, check on your Marantas, you guys. Oh, I'm throwing dirt everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this pot isn't even broken, but I'm still throwing dirt. But yeah, check on your Marantas this winter, you guys. Treat them with extra care. Um, still no pests that I'm seeing on here, which is really, really good. Um, I'm definitely gonna treat the remaining plant for pests just to be safe. Oh, I'm getting dirt on me too. Um, but yeah, check your, check your prayer plants this winter, you guys. Don't be like me. Ooh. Let's do one that maybe doesn't look quite so sad or crispy. <laughs> this guy here. So if we look like at this leaf and like here and like this, this little guy here, he looks pretty good, right? But if you look at this main leaf, this newest leaf, the biggest leaf, 
it looks pretty sad. So yeah. Um, the issue with this plant was not overwatering, not underwatering, um, not a nutrient deficiency, I don't think. Um, and not like too much or too little light. None of those issues for this guy in particular. This is a thrip problem. Are you alive or are you dead? You better be dead. You're alive. Ugh. This guy's been living. Ugh. I should have shown you that instead of just like smushing him, but I just hate seeing them. But if you don't know what thrips look like, here's what they look like. I will pop a picture here. Um, they're like little black dudes, little like long black little dudes. Um, They're so difficult to get rid of. You guys, thrips are so hard to get rid of. You need to be on top of it. <laughs> Do not ignore your plants that have thrips. I had a feeling that something was going on with this guy because I was starting to see um, some of this like discoloration here, if you know what I'm talking about. If you see that there, hopefully. I'm sure you can. Um, there's some definite discoloration all through here, kind of along the entire leaf, if I'm totally honest with myself. Um, and that is all due to thrip damage. So what thrips do is they will like burrow into the leaves and they essentially leave like little holes and stuff like that. And so I think that's why um, you're seeing like that lighter coloration is it's they're digging through like those first couple layers of chlorophyll. I could be totally wrong in that, but that's kind of what I'm assuming is going on here because I do know that they burrow into the leaves and they'll like birth themselves out. It's so gross. They'll like lay the eggs inside of the leaves essentially. <sighs> and then, yeah, you just have to really be on top of your spraying and wiping down the leaves and spraying some more uh, because you need to be getting all of the life cycles. I want to say they also get into the soil. I'm not 100% on that one. I just assume that they do. So I also spray like the top of the soil as best I can when I'm spraying this guy down. He will continue to live in my spare bathroom here. Um, to get sprayed down like a couple times a week um, and any time that any other plants need a quick spray down, he will also get a spray down. Um, if you're wondering too, I do keep that room as like a dark room because I use it as a spray room so, so frequently and I want to be able to spray it anytime during the day. Um, and you really don't want to have any light on the leaves once you have that spray on there because it is oil-based. Um, and when it, the light is flashing on it, it's going to act as like magnifying glass essentially on the leaves and then it will burn the leaves. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep the leaves and their plants in a dark area when you're spraying um, so that they can dry in that dark area. So I do keep like some black um, like liner stuff. It's like for, what's it for? I don't even know what it's for. I feel like it's like to go in between flooring for like a waterproof layer or something like that, but it's just a black um, material. It's like a th nice thick plastic so you can't see through it and it blocks out all the light from that little window in there and it works perfectly. So if you're having an issue like this and you have an, a bathroom that's like a spare area or something like that, but it does have a window, black that sucker out. And honestly, I'm lucky so that from like the placement of my window in that bathroom from like the outside, you can't tell that it's even blacked out. It just looks like the window and it just looks like the light is off always. So it's not a big deal whatsoever. It doesn't look weird from outside. So if you're wondering how I do that, that's how I do that. Um, so yeah, he's just going to stay in there. He's going to continue to get sprayed down. But other than that, this has been a pretty easy plant to care for. So this was the first and only leaf that this plant has given me since I got it, which I mean, I mean, I'm not mad about that. It's still pretty good. I feel like for an anthurium, I do feel like they grow a little bit slower, at least in my experience so far, which is limited. Um, but yeah, I feel like one leaf for getting into my house from a different house in a different environment is pretty darn good, and especially with having a pest. I'm not surprised that it's like kind of halted its growth, but it hasn't killed off any of the older leaves. Like it has, I think, all of the leaves that I purchased the plant with. Um, so I feel like we're still doing pretty good. We're doing okay. And yeah, hopefully I'll get these thrips taken care of and this plant will just continue to grow and get bigger and prettier because it is 
an absolutely gorgeous plant. It is an anthurium that when I saw it online, I just kind of skipped past it. I wasn't super interested in it. Um, I think I saw this available a few different times from like Equigenera and stuff like that, but I really wasn't into it. And then I saw a listing from a local seller on Facebook Marketplace, which is a great place to search for plants um, besides like groups and stuff like that. That can be just a little intimidating. So just look on Facebook Marketplace. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, I saw a lady selling this on there and I was like, oh, okay, that is actually really, really beautiful. And it just had, like I said, it just had like these smaller leaves. And I was shocked when it popped out this big bad boy after it got into my house. Super happy with it. I actually bought a few plants from uh, this lady and um, the other one or one of the other ones was like my large crystallinum that popped out that huge leaf. I'll pop a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. And that big leaf also came out in my care and the other leaves were still pretty large but definitely not that size. So I was really excited to see that. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I look for plants from her frequently just to see if she's got anything new posted because her plants may not like her environment for certain ones but when they get to my house they like it so I like that too okay moving along I feel like I am just like so tangential today so sorry if you're not into that but I'm just feeling chatty we just did a really do not really decent but a pretty decent looking one for a struggling plant right well <laughs> Here's our next plant. <laughs> this is our next struggling plant. Um, Tis a plant. Don't be fooled by the lack of green. Um, but there is a plant here. There is a little nub and maybe even a little growth point. Maybe, maybe a growth point. Maybe a little tiny bit of green on that little nubbin. I don't know. I just chopped this guy back. Sorry, the dogs are barking at some. Um, but yeah, I just chopped this guy back not long ago. I guess I'll tell you what he is since you cannot see. This is my forgetty eye, my Anthurium forgetty eye, uh, silver stripes or white stripes or something like that. Um, yeah, he not doing great. Not doing great. Um, he was having issues with thrips, thrips got him, they got him good. And then he grew back a little bit. He grew back like one leaf and it was a pretty good size, but it did get stuck coming out. So it was like kind of ripped and funky looking at the top. And then it hardened off most of the way and then started looking a real funky. So I just decided to cut my losses, chop the whole sucker back to the, uh, to the chunk there and repot him, which is that? What is that? Is that a root? What is that? It is. Okay, cool. I see a nice new white root already. I'm going to try and point to it here. It's like right in that middle little crevice there. There's a little white root. So that's awesome. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there is a little root there. It's under that piece of perlite. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, um, I did repot this guy also because I was worried just about the whole root situation. The roots did look actually pretty darn good and nice and robust for sure. So I did go ahead and upgrade the pot size actually from what it was in, I think. Did I or did I just kind of move it from one to another? No, I did, I did move up the pot size a little bit so that the roots could have a smidge more space and hopefully, Hopefully we'll do okay. I am confident that I will be able to grow this guy back. It's just kind of a matter of time. So yeah, I am confident because the roots do look so, so good already um, or still. And, um, and yeah, I just feel, oh, sorry. Well, that's what the thing really looks like. I do have the top mound covered in like some damp sphagnum. And then he's got a little like jacket on it. Let me kind of Put your jacket back on you, buddy. It doesn't have to be super on there, just enough to kind of hold that moisture in for the sphagnum. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep this guy in my grow tent actually, because that is where I put my um, other anthurium that was really, really struggling, which I'm not gonna include in this video because he is doing much better. So he's not in this video. I think he was in like a different struggling plants video perhaps, but uh, my anthurium, uh, Queen Esmeralda, 
version or whatever. Um, that guy I put in there in just some water because he had no roots and he finally started rooting and I think he has true, true two growth points started. So that's really exciting. That's why he's not included in this video, but um, that's why I'm putting this plant also in the green tent, grow house, green tent, whatever you want to call it. Um, that way, hopefully, he'll get, you know, just that little extra boost of humidity, a boost of light. And yeah, I think he'll be happy in here. And this area also gets sprayed very, very frequently for pests. So hopefully we'll be able to get the whole situation under control with the thrips, especially with like repotting it. I gave it fresh soil. So hopefully we're going to do okay. Cross your fingers for me on that one because that's the most risky business situation as of right now. But like I said, good roots, good roots, and a lot of them, so. <laughs> Let's do this guy, an alocasia. I feel like I never talk about alocasia anymore. I don't have very many alocasia right now. Is that a lie? Yeah, most of the alocasia that I have right now are really, really small. I keep them in um, like a covered dome situation so that they have like almost 100% humidity, almost 100% of the time, um, and they're doing pretty well in there. Um, but this is one of the few that I have out of the humidity area, and this is my alocasia bambino. So you can see all the leaves there. Pretty cute. Um, not super small, I would say. I mean, compared to like an Adora or whatever those are called, those really giant elephant ear alocasia. This is obviously really small, but um, I feel like most of the time when you see Bambino in the stores, they're like super short. Um, but yeah, he's maybe stretching for the light a little bit, even though he is like really close to a window. But oh, he's got dirt all over him because I've been spilling dirt on him this whole time. My bad. But yeah, this guy has been struggling a little bit. He's got this sad, sad leaf here, these sad leaves here, and I am pretty certain that it is thrip damage again. Um, the reason I'm thinking that is because, let me show you the back of the leaf because I feel like that's really where you can see it best, where you can see kind of that like discoloration in the leaf there from all along there. It's like it's lost some of the color. Um, and that is what leads me to believe that it is thrip damage. I don't know if you can see that there. Hopefully you can. Um, but yeah, so this guy has also been getting sprayed down a ton. He has also been living in my spare, um, my spare bathroom so that he gets sprayed really, really frequently. But yeah, he's just kind of been struggling. Although I will say, I think think this is like the newest leaf that we've had pop out. It is really small because like I said, he's been in that. He's been in that. What? <laughs> Did you see that? What the hell? <laughs> I don't know what just happened. That was like a really good looking leaf too. How did that happen? Look at that. That was a really pretty leaf. But yeah, as I was saying, this sweet little guy here, which I think is one of the newer leaves, um, is smaller because he has been living, I can't believe that. He has been living in my bathroom there with like little to no light. I will sometimes like during the day turn that light on in the bathroom so that he's getting like some light. Um, but yeah. <sighs> I'm so sorry, bud. How did you even do that? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm just like baffled that that even happened. So yeah, this is my, uh, once again, Alocasia um, Bambino. Looking rough. All of the leaves end up looking like this eventually. And I just pull them off. So that's why the bottom part looks so weird. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're down even two more leaves than what we started with this morning. So uh, yeah, and we are eventually gonna end up losing this leaf right here, as you can tell. That's slowly but surely going. Um, not a big deal though. I'm sure there are corms within here. So he's gonna be probably, at least he should be included in that repot that I do here soon. I don't know. I might hold off a little bit longer if I'm totally honest, but he should be included in it. 
My goodness, you guys, I almost forgot one of my um, saddest strugglers. So, real quick, this is my philodendron Campus Fortuna. She once was gorgeous crawling up this pole, but as you can see, she's in a freaking teeny, teeny, tiny pot. Like, good God. Could that be any smaller for the size of this? Now, despite that, I don't see any like roots actually popping out of the bottom of the plant, but as you can see, the aerial root action is absolutely wild and the plant just looks rather deficient. Um, now, do I see any pests? Have I looked already? No. I actually don't think I see any pests on here, which is kind of shocking considering how we look. Like, look at this sad little leaf right here. Not looking good. But again, look at all the aerial roots. They're wild on here. So I think maybe the aerial roots going so crazy should have been my sign that it was really, really ready for a repot despite not looking or feeling super root bound in the actual teeny tiny pot itself, which is so strange. But like, okay. Woo! Oh no, I'm gonna regret this. Maybe I overwatered it because it's very well watered. <laughs> very well watered. Um, some may say overwatered. Um, so yeah, I think maybe that's also kind of part of it. Um, but still, it's not super crazy root bound despite having all of these crazy aerial roots. Maybe they're, maybe the two are not connected in that way that I like associate them to be. <sighs> I don't know, but yeah, super sad Campus Fortuanum. I'm definitely going to be getting repot, um, possibly chopped as well, which is a super bummer, but you know, we gotta just do what's gonna be best for the plant. You know what I mean? In the long run. And if that is gonna be chopping it into nodes, so that then they can like regrow and maybe make like a super bushy campo that eventually grows that big and beautiful. Maybe that's what we'll just have to do. Um, because like I said, all of the aerial roots do look absolutely fantastic. So I feel pretty confident that if I were to cut these and maybe put them in like little cups of water or maybe even just little, um, like a tray of sphagnum that the roots would continue to take off and then new growth would probably happen, hopefully pretty quickly because it is a philodendron. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think I should do with this guy. I'm kind of leaning more towards chopping it just based on how the leaves look, just because I feel like they just, they really do just look so deficient in my opinion, but I don't know. Am I being too tough on this plant? Am I being too picky? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I don't know. On to the next plant. My next struggling plant here this winter, can you guess, is another prayer plant. So this is my, you got bugs, dude? Whatever. This is my, to the best of my knowledge, I will put the correct name on the screen here for you if this is incorrect. Um, either way, it'll be on the screen. But this is my um, Tenanthe Burl Marks. He's got some water in him. I think I may have overwatered him after underwatering him, as I do <laughs> frequently, it seems. Um, but yeah, this guy, I'm gonna try not to spill too much water on me here. Oh, as you can see, this guy grows one direction, and that is it, which is totally fine. That's like not part of its being, um, you know, part of it being an issue. That's absolutely fine with me. But you can see all of the sadness up top. We're very bald. We're very crispy up top, as you can hear as well. Um, and the leaves have just like not really ever fully uncurled, which is super annoying. Like some of them are uncurled, obviously, but some have just like stayed rolled up like that, like a freaking fruit roll up. Like why? Why? The soil, oh, so weird. There's water in the pot, but the top of the soil is so dry. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Um, so yeah, this guy clearly needs a repot. He needs an overhaul. I think if you can see in there, obviously this is a really, like I never use these pots anymore. I think I've tossed all of these. These are like old ones that, you know, just came from a nursery that like were a hanging pot because I've got that big old lip on them. <sighs> yeah. So yeah, I feel like this soil, can you hear that? 
It's so hard and crispy at the top. Can you see? I wonder if you'll be able to tell just how nasty looking that soil is. So yeah, this whole thing needs a repot. I could probably use some like division and some major cutting, but this is one of those kind of weirder prayer plants to like chop and prop. You can't really do that. You have to just kind of like separate the root systems out um, and just kind of like pull off all the nasty bits as best you can. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here eventually. And yeah, get him maybe in a different spot. I don't know. I don't know about that because before he was really seeming to enjoy the spot that he was in, I had him um, or currently have him like above our bed, um, like on a pretty tall shelf there, but he does get really nice early morning um, and early afternoon sunlight, which he was seeming to really enjoy in the spring summer. But again, once winter hit, the sun just hits a little bit different. We've had more gray days, I feel like, than any winter so far. We've had a lot of gray days, um, especially for Fort Collins, Colorado. It's been a lot. Um, so yeah, I feel like he's just been really not enjoying that. And then that combined with really, really old nasty soil is just not a good combination. So he needs a fresh repot um, and just kind of like a makeover. I think, and probably a few spray downs. All right, those are all of my struggling plants. Let me know what plants you've got struggling this winter because I know I'm not alone here. With winter comes a little bit of struggle. And you know what? It's It just kind of comes with the territory. So don't feel bad if you have plants that are struggling, but let me know what you got going down, down below, and we can all kind of help each other out here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.